is happening, people. It is Brian Aldridge with NeverSafe.com. And today's video is going to be all about the sled and sled workouts and everything sled related. Now, the reason why we're getting into this is because about a week ago, I made a video about the 10 most used pieces of equipment during my workout. So part of that was definitely the sled because it is massively versatile in all types of things that you can do with it, as you're going to find out by the end of this. But because of that video, I got a ton of emails of people saying, you know what, I, I have a sled at my gym and I try to push it, I try to pull it, I do things like that, but outside of that, I don't really know what to do. So is there any way you can make a video about it? So here we are. Now before you turn off this video because your gym does not have a sled, realize that this is a very simple concept, people, right? You can drag a lot of things around. So many gyms out there start out with nothing more than a tire with an eye bolt through it and a rope attached, and that is their sled. Guys, that works just as well as a sled that costs $1,000. Every single person watching this video can find something heavy to drag around. It's what dead relatives are for. But also realize that it's very likely that your gym does have some form of sled, but since it isn't used very much, it's probably tucked away somewhere in a utility closet or somewhere else. So make sure you ask the owners or some trainers or someone who looks like they're pretty serious about their training if your gym does in fact have a mysterious sled. However, here in 2019, a lot of gyms out there do have sleds and mostly you're gonna run into one of three variations. The first of which is going to be a prowler or some sort of knockoff of a prowler. Now many of you out there have seen a prowler, you just don't know that you've seen it. It's that sled that kind of looks like a triangle, it has three feet, it has one side that has two uprights for a high handle push and then it typically has one to two handles down on the other side near the ground for a low handle push. This thing has gotten a lot of fame and hate and a lot of stuff because uh, once people found out how hard this actually is, we cried a lot, but then we realized that it was way too good to keep out of our programs, so then it became a staple. It is important to note here that you can rig up a prowler to be a drag sled, but that's not its primary purpose, which just so happens to directly lead me to the second type of sled that you're likely to see, which is a pull sled, which means there are no uprights to push on it, it is just strictly for pulling. Now, you will see many different shapes and sizes of this, but just, they all have the same basic function, guys. They go from very expensive to not expensive at all. All that you need to know is that that there's some way to hook up some sort of apparatus that you can pull with onto that sled, you can get some good work done. Which brings us to the third type of sled that you're likely to see, which is a push sled. Now, this sled that I have in particular is a push and pull sled, but however, since you see the uprights on both sides, primarily this thing is going to be being pushed around. Now, if you're in the market, realize that I like the Prowler about a thousand times more than this push sled. I don't know whether it's the four feet on it or the surface that I push it on. Maybe there's too much purchase, but for whatever reason, this thing seems to stick a lot more than the Prowler. So you can't really load it up. It doesn't have as smooth of a glide as as I go so for my money I would definitely have gone with a prowler uh, in this instance but yeah but that generally speaking is gonna cover the three types of sleds that you're probably gonna see now in order to do sled work you're probably gonna need a couple other things the first of which is probably gonna be some sort of strap now if you bought a sled most likely these came with it right this is actually a very long strap I don't know how long it is we're gonna say it's 25 feet long. Has two loops on the end, it's a good strap. But then there's also shorter, smaller straps that you can use for other exercises. Really, the longer strap's gonna be more versatile because you can always grab shorter up on it, just choke up on it to create a shorter band. However, I will say that using a shorter uh, kind of towing strap here in certain instances definitely is a little bit more safer and a little less clunky when it comes to most things. Also, while we're on that topic, you're probably gonna want a bunch of carabiners and maybe some just little spare chain around. Because really guys, you are, a lot of this time you're kind of rigging things up and trying to make them fit. It's very much like if you're going to tow a car or pull a car out of a ditch and you have tow straps and a lot of times you just kind of end up making things work the way that they need to work because it's imperfect. Now if you're involved in strongman, a lot of your sled work is gonna involve arm over arm stuff. So I would highly recommend getting something like a battle rope or a climbing rope that you can tie to a sled or hook up to a sled somehow for that type of work. And while we're on the topic, if you're into strongman, you may want to pick up a harness. If you're not into strongman, you may want to pick up a harness if you just have a lot of money and you like to buy things. Really the only reason why you would need a harness is for extremely heavy loads like truck pulls, especially when you have a rope out of, in front of you where you need to do an arm over arm as you're pulling that truck because that makes such a massive difference. If you're a normal person, do this with the straps. And also for your average gym goers who just want your hands free the same type of way, but you're not really gonna be dealing with the same type of weight, so just throwing a weight belt around you and sticking your loops through that is gonna be just as effective. You don't need a harness. This one may or may not have been commandeered from a company that someone here may use to work. Don't, I don't. All right, so now let's talk about how this thing can be used. I know a lot of you out there already are doing some sled pushes or sled pulls at the end of your workout for common GPP or just some conditioning. You guys are probably doing stuff like 
at top of every minute for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're pushing that sled, or you're doing it as part of a medley or part of a circuit, or even you might be doing something like stupid, like a one mile sled push. Crawler flu is always in effect that day, but basic conditioning stuff you're using up primarily for your lungs. Also, as a quick side note, if you're still watching this video and you do not have access to a sled, but you really want to do this, you can substitute a sled push with a hill sprint or an empty treadmill. Like a treadmill that's actually off, you just hold on and, and you push. Uh, I've heard that it messes treadmills up. I'm not sure. I don't actually have any treadmills at my gym, so you can't do it here, but if you are doing it at a commercial gym, uh, and you mess something up, you didn't hear from me. Same with the harness thing. A lot of strongmen will use sled training to replicate a truck pull or an arm over arm truck pull, but they also use it because in strongman, a lot of our events will be a certain type of exercise. So let's say a deadlift, right? A car deadlift where the weight is gonna be something around like, let's just call it like 80 to 85% of a one rep maximum of most people in that class, right? So you're talking about something that's pretty substantially heavy but they're gonna ask you to do it as many times as possible in a minute. So it will simply say you have 60 seconds to get as many car deadlifts as you can go, right? So a lot of times what you can do with the sled is build up your lactate, just got anxiety, lactate tolerance. So if you can push back that threshold of how soon your muscles start burning or how soon they start quitting and start failing on you, then that's gonna do a lot in a, as many reps as possible in 60 seconds type of event. That can be the big difference between first and last place because three reps is the world in an event like that. And a lot of days spent puking after sled work will get you there. Many people use sled pushes as part of their warm up. A lot of times it's with moderate to even kind of heavy weight. They're not moving fast whatsoever. What they're doing is kind of marching. They're taking big, large, deliberate steps where they're trying to completely extend their leg, almost like a single leg leg press every single time. You're trying to get your glute to fire, you're trying to get your hamstring to fire, trying to get everything to work. It's just part of your warm up. You're trying to work up your hips. Everything gets kind of done with this, and this is an awesome way where you don't need to do a ton of work or really expend yourself too badly, and yet you'll get completely warm for whatever lower body thing you have going on. And then if you'd like to use sled for your upper body warm-ups, you have everything from front raises to flies to rows to high pulls. You can do all kinds of things with a sled. I'm gonna show you a lot of those in a second. Which beautifully leads me to my next point, which is that sled work can replace a few of your cable machine exercises. Now, don't get it twisted. There is no eccentric with a sled unless you're doing it on a hill. But there are a ton of cable or even machine exercises that you can mimic with a sled. Again, it's not great. But if you're working out of your garage and you do not have the money or the means for cable machine or bands or whatever you're doing and you have a sled, you can still get some stuff done. I personally use sleds all the time in my giant sets for both strength and hypertrophy. I will do everything from an arm over arm sled drag, but literally for strength. Like I'm doing a low row almost, except it's a more practical type of way to do it. Sled pushes can do a ton for putting mass on your thighs and your hamstrings. I use it a ton for my core and my row variations. And then of course I use it traditionally like in the conditioning type of sense where at the end of the giant set I'll do like a 30 second 100 foot prowler push back and forth. And then finally, which is probably one of the best ways to use a sled is for active recovery. So a lot of people when they are really beat up from a squat or deadlift workout, there is not even a chance of them going in and really doing even air body movements. They're just too beat up. However, you can go in with a sled and really get some big, slow, heavy kind of steps to kind of start working things out. But it also, guys, you need to remember the thing about doing something like a sled push, for instance, is that there is no eccentric. It's all concentric motion, right? So as you're pushing forward, you're just chopping, 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 chopping. And if you did not know, the eccentric portion of many lifts is where a lot of your soreness comes in. And to be honest, it's a lot of where the damage comes in as well. So whether you're doing the more traditional sled pushes and pulls for your lower body, or you're doing some of the upper body stuff that I'm getting ready to show in just a minute. This is a way that you can restore kind of your muscles by getting blood there because blood is what heals, but you get the blood there without creating a lot of new damage. So it is absolutely perfect for something like active recovery. I would highly recommend next time that you are super beat up from a hard squat day or hard deadlift day, get in with the prowler, throw a moderate amount of weight on it, not much at all, and literally just start marching. Take big steps, Take deliberate motions, grip the floor with your feet, feel each muscle group lock out as you go, and do that for just 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of your workout, and you'll be shocked at how you'll feel afterwards. All right, so now that you guys know the what and the why, let's talk a little bit about the how. Now, I'm not going to go into a tutorial of all the different things that I'm gonna be showing with this sled in just a second. That'd be a long video. So I'm just briefly gonna give you guys a couple tips on pushing the sled, because that's where I know absolutely every single person watching this video is gonna start out. However, it's always kind of intimidating when you need to jump into something new, and you don't wanna look stupid, because I know some of you out there went up to a sled and you went to push it and ended to go anywhere, and then you just calmly, well, I just, 
Yeah, been there. So let's go ahead and cover a couple basic things so that that embarrassing situation hopefully it doesn't happen. All right, so the first thing when you go to push this thing is that you don't wanna stick your hands up as high as possible on those handles. That's gonna create more of a downward pressure that is gonna start digging that thing into the ground, which is gonna be the opposite of what you want to do. For that reason, bring your hands down just a little bit, but don't get too drastic with it. The main thing that you wanna do here is to make sure that you can get your body in a good, powerful position. However, you want your shoulders at about the same height of your hands, if not even possibly a little bit below. The second thing that I'm encouraged that you think about is the same stuff that I talk about in every other lift, in that you still need to breathe and brace just like a squat or deadlift and you need to squeeze those uprights. It still matters as far as power output, guys. This might not matter at very light weights, but trust me, if you go to move something super heavy or if you're on a surface that is kind of sticky, you're gonna want a big belly breath, you wanna brace it down, you wanna be squeezing those handles so when you go to put input in, it actually goes instead of just kind of giving you whiplash. Third thing is keep a neutral spine. I know you're going to want to crane your neck up to look where you're going. However, that's just gonna take power out just like it does in the squat if you stick your head up, you want to keep your neck neutral. I'm not saying stare down at the ground, but I am saying try to keep your chest up and your chin down. And if you want to look where you're going, look out like above your eyebrows, right? That's kind of where you're going. Do not be staring like this. If you do that, you're not gonna have as much power and you're probably gonna cramp up your neck. It's gonna be painful enough. Don't add more, don't add to it. But if you apply those few tips to your first sled push, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get it to go somewhere. However, as we discussed earlier, most likely you just pushed a prowler with the high handles and now you're down at the other end and you need to come back with the low handles. Guys, all of the stay mechanics stay pretty much alike. The biggest problem that I see when people push on low handles is that they have both their butt and their shoulders above their hands. When that happens, they're just pushing straight down the ground and they might as well just be digging a hole. Where you going? Nowhere. Anyone? When you're pushing from those low handles, the same principles apply. You're gonna wanna try to get your spine as parallel to the ground as possible. Stick your body in a good position so you can get your shoulders as close to the height of your hands as you can, and then you're gonna try to drive in. The final beginner tip that I'm gonna give you guys is eventually you're gonna hit some weight or some sled or something. You're gonna go to push and it's gonna go absolutely nowhere. So in that case, what I want you to do is still the same thing. Still breathe, still brace, squeeze those handles. But now when you go to push, what I want you to do is start with your arms extended. When you go to drive, I want your body to hit. Just like you're doing in football or anything else, I want you to take your anterior delts, the front of your shoulders, and I want you to slam them as close as possible into the back of your hands. With any luck, hopefully that broke that inertia and now you've got the thing moving. The biggest thing about any event where it is a sled or a pull or anything that has to do with perpetual motion is that you need to keep that thing going. If it stops, you have twice as hard of a fight in your hands. Once it goes, you keep it going. It is so much easier to keep things moving that have started than it is to restart them again and again and again. Momentum is real. That said, typically pushing a sled with your body way up near it isn't nearly as fast or efficient. So as it does begin to pick up speed, you wanna extend your arms out just like you would on a normal sled push. All right guys, so that's what I have for the basic teaching portion about the sled here. What I'm going to do now is show you a ton of examples. It's not going to be exhaustive. There are literally endless things that you can do with the sled, okay? so. For all of you who are gonna be like, well, I do this myself, but well, congratulations, man. I'm very happy for you. I am on a deadline. So I'm gonna give you guys a ton of exercises that I do with the sled, some of my favorites that hopefully you guys can try. I'm not, like I said, obviously going to do tutorials, but I will be doing a voiceover, just kind of explaining what these are, why I'm doing them, what they're hitting, that kind of thing. But guys, I do appreciate absolutely everything you guys do to support me, all the help, all the programs, absolutely everything. You guys are amazing. I will cut to relit. Do I want to end this now? Yeah, I'll end it here, but remember, all those exercises are coming. Guys, I will catch up with you in the week. Until I do, go out to something amazing with us. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. I'll see you then. Oh, and I knew I would forget, but guys, the Rise shirts that we have that uh, came out just a little bit ago, uh, they are just about completely sold out. And if you guys are not fans of the channel, once those shirts are gone, they do not get remade. They're not more, we don't restock. Once they're gone, they're gone. So if you guys did want a chance to get one of those, now is your last chance. I think all of the Be Dangerous stuff or most of that is gone. Um, but yeah, check it out. Almost all of those shirts are out of here. So if you guys did want to pick any of those up before they are gone forever, make sure you do that. We also have some exciting things coming up that might involve me not supporting a certain company anymore for two reasons, but I'll get in that later. Thanks. All right, guys. So we're starting out with the forward sled push, which of course is for your lower body, your quads, your hamstrings, your hips. Same with the back pedal sled drag, but this explosive sled row is actually for your entire body. You're going to feel it in your legs. You're gonna your upper body. This front raises, supermans, uh, flies, things like that are all gonna all be very lightweight. Uh, same with these high pulls. They're all gonna be part of your warm up. You might be able to throw a little bit in your assistance, but honest, uh, they're gonna be a little bit light for that. Then of course, 
sprints if you don't have a harness just throw those straps over top of your shoulders uh pull throughs amazing for building up your posterior chain but only if you use more weight than i'm using there then i moved on to some core variations here with the sled plank row and the side sled plank row after that I did some farmer's walk sled pulls and all these next couple exercises here are all just the loops have been put through the back of my belt. It's no big deal. It just adds intensity to a lot of very basic type of exercises like an animal walk. After that, I finish up with a little bit of strongman stuff showing you the standing arm over arm sled pull and the seated arm over arm sled drag. So both are really, really great additions to your training guys. I know this list is not exhaustive at all, unfortunately. This video took me a very long time to record, so hopefully some of you are going to watch it and you guys care about sleds. So guys, thank you so much for staying with me. I will catch up with you later in the week, but until I do, as always, go out do something amazing with your lives, keep working on our people, be nice to each other. I'll see you then.